to the fivefold ministry rest in the house, the apostles, the pastors, the teachers, the preachers, and even you, because you are all servants of the Most High God. Amen. And without your work in the vineyard, it would not get done. Amen. Don't think that a title separates you from anything. It's just an anointing that God has placed on your life to do the work for him. Amen. Amen. So we just want to thank God for that. And I want to thank God for each and every one of you that are here. Amen. Amen. I don't know how many t-shirts left, but they're going down in numbers. Uh, we'll do better next year. <laughs> well, how poor are we? something different. We have a new version that's going to come out possibly for next year. I'm working on it right now. But I'm going to have, you guys going to stand up for a minute. Amen. So, you can name that. So, you see the back of her t-shirt. Okay, can you see it? And you see the front of her t-shirt. So, now we have hands holding us. The covenant sisters. God is holding us up. As covenant sisters. So we're gonna have a new version next year. We just work on it. We are working on this. So I, I I'm thanking you for your t-shirts because that helps us to purchase more. All right. Amen. 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 So my assignment this morning, my God, as we get ready to break the bread of life, understanding your weapon of warfare. Let us pray. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, we give you all glory. We give you all glory, reverence, and we allow your desire and your will to be done in this place. Lord God, sit me down and you stand up, Lord God, and teach the women of God how to be a balance, Lord God, how to be sharpshooters, Lord God, how to position themselves for greatness, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, teach us this day, Lord God, what you would have us to know that when we leave from here, we can go out and battle demons and demonic activity and know that we have the victory. Father, I thank you in advance for the word that you have given for your people on this day. So we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I would have you all to please turn your Bibles. Let's start here. Let's start with 2 Corinthians. 10th chapter and the 6th verse. Now I'm going to teach you some things this morning. So you need to get your pen and your pad out. Because you're going to need to write down some things. Amen. You know, it's, it's time for us to stop just getting preached at. Sometimes we got to take some notes so we can go back and effectively pursue what we need and have some weapons to take with us. Amen. Amen. Can you stand as we read the word of God, please? Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. Go there, and then we're going to leave from there and go, so you put your hand in it. Ephesians 6 and 13. <laughs> so, for 2 Corinthians 10 and 6, and then Ephesians 6. And it says, being in readiness to punish every insubordinate for his disobedience. When your own submission and obedience as a church are fully secured and complete. Flip over if you will to Ephesians we're going to go to six uh -huh. and we're going to start at, let's start at verse 12. <coughs> 6 and 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now let me ask you to understand that the enemy has an army. Right. So you need to know especially who you are fighting and why you are fighting this army. Amen? Amen. 
because we may be seated in the presence of the Lord. First of all, we need to understand that we must take over an atmosphere, 5 a.m. prayer. When you walked into the room, you felt the presence of the Lord. Just now in worship, we took over this atmosphere so the presence of the Lord can be revealed. Amen? Amen. Not in your flesh can you take over an atmosphere. Amen. But you must understand that you can only take over an atmosphere in the spirit. Amen. Try the spirit, by the spirit, through prayer and supplication, make all your requests known Amen. unto God, right? Amen. So we know that we must always pray, always pray, always pray in the spirit. Amen. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. We must take over demonic systems. Systems. The enemy has a system against you. Hallelujah. But you can only take over that system in the spirit. Six F, Ephesians 6 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It is not you that I'm warring against. It is the attitude in you that I'm warring against or the, the situation around you that I'm warring against. But it's not you personally. So don't take it personal. Listen, understand it is not about you. This is about God's kingdom. Amen. This is about building God's kingdom and warring against the kingdom of evil yeah. versus the kingdom of good. Yeah. You got to understand how to wrestle. It says, Corinthians says, having a readiness, being ready. Yeah. Are you prepared? Do you know what to take to battle? Mm -hmm. Can you take a battle? That's the big question. Uh, Can you absolutely take a battle from God and come out victorious? Uh, Do you know that you Amen. Amen. 40 different types of 
pray for us. Yes. Plus. Plus. So we haven't stopped there. Yes. We're just scratching the surface. Yeah, yeah. That's just for it. Uh -huh. He said there's more than that. Oh my God. He said you are more than that. More than that. Or different types of prayer. And so as we go on in Ephesians and we're looking at the scripture, we're going to separate some things because I want to show you we got offensive prayer and defensive prayer. Okay. Yep. 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 Okay. So when you look at Ephesians, Ephesians is talking about your defensive prayer. It says stand, stand up. With a robe of righteousness. Uh -huh. It said, girt your lions uh -huh. with truth. Hallelujah. This is defense. You're putting this on. Put on. Put on. Put on. So you're arming yourself. He said, put on the armor of God. So arm yourself. He said, okay, wait a minute. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. You are getting ready for a battle. He said, put on the breastplate. You got the belt of truth, right? You got a robe of righteousness. He said, prepare your feet so when you step, you got the gospel walking with you. You got to walk this thing out. You got to know that he is my all in all. You got to know wherever my feet tread, I'm treading on some knee and some place, but he is what? Under my feet. This is what you have to know. You got to know this before you go into prayer. You got a helmet of salvation. Yeah. Uh, Romans 12 and 2 say, meditate what? And meditate on the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Be careful right there. what enters in. Yes, because what enters in is going to take you to the next place you yeah. need to go. Right. If you got mess entering, you're going to be messing all your life. Come on, somebody. Right. But if you got the Holy Spirit moving in, then you will know how to be a righteous woman of God. Right. You will know how to stand in righteousness even when the enemy comes in like a flood. You'll be like, I'm not dealing with you. Right. I'm going to pray about this thing. And then I'm going to tell Daddy, get him. I don't have to do it. I just need to know where to go. See, the thing is, people think I need to be smart. You don't need to be smart. You just need to know how to go to the resources. You can't know everything. I don't have to know everything, but I know where to go. He knows everything. This one's yours. Yeah. I'm going to stand in agreement with you. Right. Because I see my sister may not agree with me. But I know if I touch an agree in heaven, yeah. everything is already done. I'm going to touch an agree with God. So this is what you're going to take to a battle. But I really want to talk to you a little bit about offensive weapon. Because the Bible gives you clear instruction about what to put on. Put on the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Listen to what they say. If I'm in a battle mm -hmm. and I'm feeling depressed, I'm heavy, I've lost someone, or right. things are not going right. Mm -hmm. The Bible says this. I didn't write this up. I'm just in the Bible. It says, put on the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Am I right? How do you somebody? Is that what it say? Oh, but the devil said, oh, I'm going to make you feel heavy and depressed all day long because this ain't right. And you know it ain't right. And I treated you bad. And so what you need to do is start jumping out. Jesus Christ. These are offensive weapons. 
He said, take the joy of the Lord to be your strength. So when you are weak and you feel like you can't go on, he said, take my joy to be your strength. Come on, somebody. See, he keeps pouring out and telling us what to take. Take this to battle. Take this to battle. Take it to battle. And you will be victorious. Because he won't tell you to take the joy of the Lord to be your strength if he didn't believe that you were going to be victorious in the battle. Take the joy of the Lord to be your strength. The biggest offensive weapon that we have is the weapon of prayer yeah. and intercession. Yeah. Because out of your mouth is going to come things that God will absolutely pull out of the atmosphere and create them to be done in your behalf. In your behalf, but for his glory. This is really not about you. This is about his glory. He's got to know that you know who he is. You know, so sometimes he will put you in a battle to remind you who he is. He put the children of Israel in a battle to remind them of who he was. Come on, somebody. We have the same children. We have the same genealogy. Come on, somebody. You are children of the seed of Abraham by faith, right? How many people got faith in here? Do you know that you are a seed of Abraham because of your faith? Come on, somebody. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Know how to take a battle. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something about prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer needs to be consistent. Yeah. Amen. You can't pray today and wait till today and later or today. Right. Whatever you feel like, right. I begin to start praying again. Yeah. Prayer needs to be consistent. Yeah. So, consistent means every day, yeah. over yeah. and over yeah. again. So, let me just, this is an analogy. So, if you were making a cake, and you want the batter to be consistent, what do you do? You beat that thing. Woo, my God. So when the devil comes, you got to beat that thing. You got to beat that thing. You got to beat it consistently until it proves itself out. You know, so when it starts to prove itself out, then you know that God showed up and said, I got this daughter. Thank you, Jesus. So now the cake can be made. But you ain't gonna make a lovely cake. So beat that thing. We already forward. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Prayer needs to be persistent. You got to pursue this thing. Oh God, you got to pursue. And you got to chase it down. You know if you are running the race and they say the finish line is over there, you don't start walking in the race. How you going to pursue something? Taking your own sweet time. Come see, come sigh. Yes, arise, arise. You ain't gonna never get there. The Bible says it must be persistent. You have to pursue. You know you gotta seek God as a vital.